The man in charge of the magnet is John Smith. So welcome to our facility here. This is our manufacturing facility for the central solenoid uh, coils. His experience in nuclear fusion runs deep. So what we're doing here is I wanted to show you how we start splicing the coil together. He took his first job in the field fresh out of undergrad. So almost 22 years I've been working in fusion. In his line of work, fusion is a kind of holy grail. Fusion is the same energy that powers our sun. In theory, it could generate nuclear power anywhere in the world without a constant stream of radioactive waste. And a fusion reactor is intrinsically safe. And there's no carbon, right? So it's a very clean source of energy from that, and it's uh, almost completely renewable. So put the conductor through. Engineers at General Atomics have been experimenting with fusion for half a century. So you got the argyle all set? But now, Smith and his team are part of a major international effort to prove fusion can actually power the world. It can be done. Today, they unveiled the beginning of work on a magnet over four stories tall, designed to go right into the heart of a giant fusion reactor in the south of France. It's all part of a 35-nation project called ITER, Latin for The Way. Together, we will bring the power of the sun down to Earth. The big picture goal with, with fusion is to replicate what happens on the sun. Fusion fuels our sun by forcing atoms to overcome their natural repulsion. Existing nuclear power plants produce energy by splitting atoms, but fusion would do the opposite. You're heating them up so much that they come together. Fusion would give off two byproducts, helium and highly energetic particles that could be harnessed to create electricity. Smith says the challenge is... Two atoms don't like to fuse together. You gotta force them together, and that's what we're trying to do with the temperature. The magnet, along with other heating systems, will help bring two hydrogen isotopes up to extreme temperatures 10 times hotter than the sun. 150 million degrees. It'll do that by driving current through a plasma magnetically confined within the reactor. Building a magnet that powerful requires nearly 24 miles of conducting cable manufactured by engineers halfway around the world. This is a spool of conductor as it came from Japan. We've uh, taken it and uh, on the shipping fixture that it came from, we lowered down onto our despooling device. The finished magnet will consist of six smaller cylinders. They'll each be stacked on top of the other before the whole thing gets lowered into the reactor. Those cylinders are called coils, and each one will contain 40 layers of conducting cable. This machine creates those layers by winding the cable into precise concentric spirals. So this is the first layer of the first production coil that will go to ITER. Once the coils are tightly wound and perfectly welded, they'll each weigh in at 250,000 pounds. That's too heavy for even this massive crane to lift. By now, the only way to move them around is on this heavy-duty cart, which creates a cushion of air. The simplest way to explain it is an air hockey table turned upside down. So instead of blowing air up to levitate a puck, we're actually blowing air down and levitating the coil. These coils will have to withstand extremely cold temperatures. They'll be chilled to nearly absolute zero once they're inside the French reactor. But first, they need to bake inside this furnace for five weeks at 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit. So this here is a big convection oven, very simply put. All that heat forges a superconducting material capable of circulating electricity with no energy loss. Many steps in the magnet's production are done by machine. However, some tasks are so delicate, they still need to be done by hand. For instance, insulating the pipes that pump liquid helium into the magnet. So it's amazing to think you have something this big, weighs this much, and here he is putting little pieces together with tweezers. It'll be 2019 before Smith and his team ship the final piece of the magnet off to France. And it'll be 2040 before ITER paves the way for a demonstration plant aiming to actually pump fusion energy into the grid. Some experts believe even that timeline is optimistic. ITER has been notorious for cost overruns, delays, and management problems. Congress is even threatening to pull U.S. funding without certain reforms. But Smith says for people like him, who've dedicated so much to fusion, it's rewarding just to see these parts finally getting made. I was talking to a physicist the other week. He came over to take a tour, and he says, I've been working on ITER for 15 years. And, you know, the physicists, this is, is their life, looking at the magnetic fusion and ITER and the promise of that. And he said, you know, in all that 15 years, this is the first component I've ever seen that actually is going to go to ITER. David Wagner, KPBS News.